So welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this question here now is question number eight from the International A Level Pure Mathematics P1 June 2021 exam. And this question here, the first part of it is about completing the square. It says the curve C1 has equation y equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 9. Write 3x plus 6x plus 9 in the form a times x plus b squared plus c, where a, b, and c are constants to be found. So here we have um, something which is a quadratic equation. And we want to write it in a form in which we want, we want to complete the square. Now, to complete the square, what we need is something that says x squared, 1x squared. We don't need 3x squared. So what we need to do is to take out this 3 and put it in a bracket outside. And it doesn't matter whether this term is divisible by 3 or not. You're not taking it out because it's a factor. I'm taking it out because I want this to say x squared. If I write that, that's 3 times x squared. Now, it just so happens this is also a factor of, this is a multiple of 3, so 3 is also a factor of this number. So it ends up that this becomes 2x. Okay, so you have 3x squared plus 6x. Okay, if this was a 5, I would write here 5 over 3x. Okay, right now I haven't started completing the square. I've just got it ready for completing the square. Now, like what I like to do, my personal way of doing this, is I like to focus on the x squared and the x term only. So I close the bracket here and I write the plus 9 as it is outside. I don't take the factor of 3 out from all the terms. Just from the x, I take this, this, this 3 out from the x squared and the x term. Because I want this to say 1x squared. It doesn't matter whether 3 goes into this number or not. I'm going to divide it by 3, whatever it is. So if it was 5, I'd put 5 over 3 here. 5 over 3x. Then I would close the bracket and I'd put plus 9. Because when I'm completing the square, I like to focus only on the x squared and the x term. Okay? Because when you're completing the square, you can think of it. And now, if you know, this is something which is a kind of visual way of thinking about it. You can think of it as, all right, you have... I, whoops, let me get back to my old pen. Okay, you can think of it as having something like um, x squared plus 2x. I want to complete the square for this, and whatever's around it, I'll deal with that afterwards. So if I x squared plus 2x, you can think of it like um, I want to make a square. I want to end up with a, a, a square bracket like this. I want to have something like this, so x plus something squared. That's what I have. I want to have that in my answer. So what I can do is I can say, okay, I've got x... I've got like a square. This is like a square. And if this is a square of area x squared, then this side is x and this side is x. And if I like add this, like this rectangle to it like this, and this is like, this has to have an area of plus 2x, that's x squared plus 2x, that must be a length of plus 2, because x times 2 is 2x. Now if I want to be, if I want to make it into a square, what I can do is I said, okay, this is, this length is equal to this length. If I can add a length here of a half of this length, so if I cut this in half, so this becomes now plus 1 here. This now becomes plus 1. And this is now plus 1. And the area inside here, okay, is now cut up into two equal areas. So this is plus x, and this is plus x. If I take this rectangle here, and I move it onto this side, so that the x, the length which is x, which is this length here, fits along here so this will be x and this would be plus one okay so i've moved this over here so i can get rid of it from there now so i've moved this part over there okay so now i have something which says x plus one times x plus one i have x plus one times x plus one which is x plus one squared but the problem is this is too big x plus one squared is too big. Why? Because this, this has got an area of x, that's x squared, that's plus x, that's plus x. There's an area here. If I leave it like this, I'm going to have to also include this area here. And the area here is 1, because it's 1 times 1, which is 1. I don't want this area here, because I want to and I want to have x squared plus 2x. If I leave it like this, I'll have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So what I've got to do is I've got to take away the 1, so it goes from here, and you don't include that part Okay, because it's not really a complete square. It's part of a square, but we've kind of made it into a square looking thing. But we've got to take away this part at the end. So we have x plus 1 squared minus 1. Okay, so that's like a visual way of thinking about completing the square. Of course, you don't have to uh, do it in that way, of course. 
but I'm just trying to um, make you realize how completing the square works. So if I apply this to this, basically I'm focusing on this part in the bracket, the x squared and the x term. So now I have three times. Now I'm going to complete the square for what's in here. So I'm going to write a square bracket. I'm going to put x. I have half of this. As we did that, we, we took that 2x and cut it into two parts. So that became plus 1. So that's plus 1. Okay. So that the coefficient of this is plus 1. So x plus 1 times x plus 1 is x squared plus 2x. But it, the problem is it's also plus 1. I don't want the plus 1, so I've got to take away the 1. So I've got to take away the square of whatever's in here. This times this gives you that. Whatever that gives us, I've got to take it away from this square bracket. So this will give me, if I expand this, it will give me x squared plus 2x plus 1, then minus 1, because we don't want the plus 1. That's why we take away the 1. We don't want that square, that part of the square here, so we take away the minus 1. And then I've got plus 9, which was there from the beginning. All right, so now we can just make it look as it's supposed to look. So we're going to multiply 3 with this bracket. So we have 3 times x plus 1 squared, and then the 3 by the minus 1. That's 3 times minus, uh, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. You don't multiply the 3 by the 9 because the 9 is outside that bracket. So we have then plus 9. So that gives us 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 6. And there we have it in the form that is required. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Okay, so we had to complete the square for this expression here. And we've completed the square. All right. And you can always check your answer in case you made a mistake. You say, okay, this is going to give me x squared plus 2x. Um, sorry, x squared, yeah, plus 2x plus 1. So that'll be 3x plus 6x plus 3. And then add 6 gives you 3x squared um, plus 6x plus 9. So it gives you what you do, what you what you started with if you expand it just to check. All right, so there's the answer for H part A. Now we're going to move on to part B. Okay, so part B says the point P is a minimum point of C1. And C1 has equation Y equals 3X squared plus 6X plus 9. Okay, so deduce the coordinates of P. Now, the form that we've written it in here, Y equals 3 times X plus 1 squared plus 6. This form, when you complete the square, is a very useful form for us to express a quadratic equation for or quadratic expression. Uh, for many reasons. One of them is it makes it easy to solve quadratic equations, um, um, you know, especially if they don't factorize. And secondly, it helps us to determine the vertex or the, that means a minimum or the maximum point of a quadratic. Remember, a quadratic function can go like this or it can go like this. All right, so it has this kind of minimum point smiley face where it has a point below which it never goes. If the x squared term is positive, like this, 3x squared, so if it's positive, and it have a maximum point if the x squared term is negative, like a frowny face, negative, okay? So this, of course, will have a positive um, coefficient of x squared, so it has a, a, a curve that turns upwards, a smiley face, so it's going to have a minimum point below which it never goes. So if you think about it, many people memorize, okay, the vertex, okay, you, the, the coordinates of p are going to be You'd write the opposite of the x, and you write whatever's here outside the bracket. That is the coordinates of the vertex. And they don't understand why. They just say, okay, have to, the vertex is always the thing that's in the bracket with the x, but the opposite sign, and the thing that's outside adding or subtracting from the bracket, and it's just with the same sign. And they, they know that's a vertex, and you're going to get the mark for it, and that's fine. However, it's better if you understand why. And I'm going to just take a few minutes to explain why. Why is this the vertex? Okay, and you can understand it by thinking about this equation and thinking about what is the lowest that this can ever become. All right, so if you think about it, whatever's here, you're going to be adding 6 to it. You're always going to be adding 6 to it. Okay, so this thing, okay, is um, whatever this is, is going to be adding 6 to it. So what is the lowest that this part can ever be? Okay, if you can find what the lowest that this, this part can ever be, then you're going to find out what the minimum point of this graph is. It's going to be the lowest part this can ever be, plus 6. And if you think about this, this part inside the bracket is going to be squared. This is always going to be something positive. It's never going to be something negative. 
right? Because when you multiply, th when, you, when you put some x value in here, even if it's minus a million, you're going to have add one to it. It's going to be negative still, but you're going to square it. It's going to become positive. So this, this thing will always, always be a positive value. Okay. So you're going to have three times a positive value plus six. So it's always going to be something that is bigger than six because you're adding something to six always. The lowest this can ever be, this bracket, is zero. When? Why? Because if I have x equals minus one, this will be minus one plus one, which is zero. And this will be 0 squared, which is 0. And this will be 3 times 0, which is 0. So when x equals negative 1, this bracket becomes 0. And this whole part becomes 0. And you're left with what? Plus 6. So the lowest value that y can ever be is 6. And when does that happen? When this bracket becomes 0, what makes that bracket 0? When x is minus 1. So that's why x equals minus 1 and y equals 6 is the vertex or the coordinates of the minimum point of C. You could have also found the minimum point of C by differentiating, okay, by finding the gradient when the gradient of the function is 0. But there is no need to do that because it's worth one mark and we've already completed the square and all we have to do is say, okay, when this is 0 and this bracket is 0, x is minus 1, so that's the x value of the minimum point and when when x is minus 1, this is 0, so you've got 6. That is the y value. If you just memorize it, fine. If you know, oh, that's minus 1 and opposite of this and, and the same as that, that's absolutely fine as long as if you understand the basis behind it, which I just explained, it's, that's better for you to understand what's happening, okay? As well as memorizing certain things, it's fine. But as long as you understand, understanding will really um, make the maths more enjoyable for you. And also, it will help you to have a deeper and better understanding of other types of topics as they come up um, later on. Okay, so it's important for you to um, try to understand what's happening as well as just memorizing. Okay, so that's part B. Okay, now for part C. It says a different curve C2 has equation Y equals AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. It says where A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D are constants, Given that curve 2 passes through the point P, which has the coordinates minus 1, 6, as we found in part B, uh, intersects the x-axis at minus 4, minus 2, and 3, making, find making your method clear the values of A, B, C, and D. Okay, so now what we have here is a question about a cubic curve. A cubic curve, okay, depending on the values of A, uh, of A can either look like this or it could look like this. If A is positive, it will go up and up like this. Okay, if A is negative, it will go down and down like this. Okay, so um, that's how a cubic curve li looks. Now, they've told us that it passes through the point P, which is minus 1, 6, and also it intersects the x-axis at minus 4, minus 2, and 3. So just imagine this is the x-axis. So this say this is minus 4, and this is minus 2, and this is 3. All right, these are three roots of the equation. X equals minus 4 x equals minus 4, x equals minus 2, and x equals 3 are three roots of the equation. Okay, so what that means is there are three factors to this equation. If you are solving an equation, I'm going to like go backwards now. If you are solving an equation, um, like you're, you're solving a quadratic equation, for example, you know, you factorize and then you say, you find out where it equals 0, and you say, okay, either one factor equals zero or the other factor equals zero. So then you say, okay, for example, if it was x, x plus four equals zero, you would say, okay, x plus four equals zero, so x equals minus four. So like, if you're going, I'm going to go backwards now because I'm trying to come to the equation from the roots. So if x equals minus four, that means x plus four equals zero. Okay, that means x plus four is one of the factors. And if x equals minus two, that means x plus two equals zero. That means x plus 2 is another one of the factors. And if x equals 3, then x minus 3 equals 0. So that's another one of the factors. So what we can do is you can say, okay, that means these three factors will multiply together to give you 0. So you have x plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 equals 0. All right, so these are the three factors of this. All right, however, they could have also been something in front of them that was multiplied by them. 
okay? For example, there could have been a number in front of them. So I'm going to write that number, which would be the A, because that's going to be A times X times X times X. That will be AX cubed. So there could have been some sort of factor in front of it. So you have to write that in front of there. Okay, you can't just leave it as this, because there could have been a number that, that cancels out when you divide. So this is like working backwards from solving equations. You're kind of like thinking, okay, if that was a root, then the factor must have been x plus 4 that caused that root. And that must have been x plus 2, that must, must have been x minus 3. But there could have been a number in front of them multiplying them, which we call a. Okay, so we're going to call that a. That's the a x cubed. Right, now we can see that it passes with the point minus 1, 6. So let's use that fact. So the equation, the original equation could have been y equals something times x plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, now, if I use this point 1, 6, and I substitute it into here, that's going to help me find what a is. This is when x equals minus 1. This is x equals minus 1. And this is y equals 6. So that we can substitute those values. 6 equals a times minus 1 plus 4 and minus 1 plus 2 and minus 1 minus 3. So you have 6 equals. Now minus 1 plus 4 is 3. So that's uh, a times 3. And minus 2 plus 1 is 1. And minus 1 times minus 3 is minus 4. So you have 6 equals. That's minus 12a minus 12a so a equals negative a half so a equals negative a half so in fact we can see that the curve is actually going to be of this type down and down because a is negative all right the this term is negative a half so now we can uh, work out what a is so let's just say y equals negative a half times and we've got x plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 to find it in the form that they want we have to now expand these brackets. So let's expand these brackets. So we have y equals negative a half times, this is going to give you, let's, let's expand this, you have x plus 4 times, if you expand this, you're going to get x squared. Using the pattern, you've got to have the sum of minus 3 and 2, which is minus x and minus 6. And now we can say y equals minus a half times, this is going to give you x cubed minus x squared minus 6x plus 4x squared minus 4x minus 24 okay so let's simplify that first you've got x cubed you've got minus x squared plus 4x squared which is 3x squared and you've got minus 6x minus 4x which is minus 10x and minus 24 and you multiply everything by negative a half so you have minus a half x cubed minus 3 over 2x squared plus 5x and plus 12. And there we have the equation in the form that they want, where a equals negative a half, and b equals negative 3 over 2, and c equals 5, and d equals 12. ax cubed plus bx plus cx plus d. And there we have the answers to part c. Okay, so this is a very um, good, important question. And it's about cubic curves. And basically, you can think about if the roots are minus 4, minus 2, and 3, that means the factors are x plus 4, x plus 2, and x minus 3. But there could be something that was multiplying this before, which got cancelled out, or you know, you divided by that, so you have to have the a there. You know a point that it passes through, substitute the values of y and x into there, and you'll find um, you know, the value of a. And once you find the value of a, you can just expand these factors together, and you end up with it in the form that they wanted. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. Okay, so that was the end of the question, part C of, of question 8. And that's done now. Um, other questions which are going to be about this topic, which would be, I guess, under um, the topic of functions or graphs.